Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name's Finnell. This is episode number two for Ginger Appreciation Month. And to continue the celebration, we're going to make all the little things that you could find in Madeline's office. And there are quite a few of them, but the first one we're going to make is the diffuser. But before we get started, don't forget to check the link in the description. That would take you to the scavenger hunt, where you'll find the list of materials and a free principal guide, so you can make this stuff along with me. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. To start off this piece, I did end up having to use resin to make the oil container portion of the lantern. A big large bead or even a large round button would work. But if you would like to take the resin route, I'm using the smallest sphere mold that I have and only filling it halfway. Once it's completely cured, we have to drill a hole straight through the center. If you're having problems getting your hole started, it can help to take a pokey tool and dig in to the top where you want to drill the hole just a little bit. This creates a spot for the drill bit to grab a hold of. But please be mindful of your fingers to this on a flat surface. It took forever for me to get through mine. But once you finally do, we want to give the outside a good sanding to where you cannot see through it at all and there's no shininess left. Now that we got everything ready, we can start stringing it together. For this you'll need some white embroidery floss or some sort of white string. About 3 inches will be enough. Tie a good knot at one end and then use glue to stiffen the other. Give it a minute or so to dry and then we can start adding our beads. Starting from the bottom, you'll need a large pointed bead cap. Then a small round bead, just a bit bigger than a seed bead. Next is the large rounded bead cap, flip the other way. Then the resin piece or a large bead. Next is the small rounded bead cap. And finally, a small bottom pointed bead cap. Now that we've got our string through, we can poke our wire through. Your best bet would be floral wire, but as long as it's sturdy but can fit through all the holes, then you're good. The string serves two purposes here. One, it helps us get it on the wire, and two, in the end we can use it as a wick. Once you have them all on the wire, pull it back through just a bit until the wire just barely pokes through the tiny bead cap at the top. We want it to be there for support, but also be able to hide it with the string. Once it's set where you want, use super glue and basically fill up the whole little area of the bead cap and let it soak into the string. As it starts to dry, pull the string straight up so that way when you nip it off, it looks like a wick. To make sure everything is secured together, turn it upside down and put a good bit of super glue inside the bead cap around the wire and the string. Then carefully, minding your fingers, sprinkle baking soda over top of it. This is an instant chemical reaction and it makes the super glue hard, but if you get it on your skin, it can burn you, so please take caution. When you have the bottom solidified, flip it over and we're going to do the same thing on top, but we don't want to use as much. Because this stuff does bulk up, we just want enough of it in there to hold everything in place. To make it look a little more realistic, I took a black marker and just darkened the tip of my string. Now we can cut the excess wire off the end. With the lantern finished, we need to make the piece that holds the jar over top of the flame. For this, I used another piece of floral wire. Make a loop at the very end of your wire. This loop is going to sit flush against the floor and help balance it. Then bend it upwards, but just enough to reach above the first bead cap. Using your lamp as a guide, make a loop where the little round bead would be. And 
and just where the wires would meet, bend the end of the wire upwards in an arch. Once you have it a bit of a distance above the wick, make a hard right angle to the side. Then using something like a skinny marker as a mandrel, wrap the wire around one time. Once you've gotten your loop, measure about a half an inch past and cut the rest off. While keeping the loop shape, take the end of the wire and poke it underneath the other part at the junction. Then using your pliers starting at the end, make another curl upwards. And finally, the last thing we have to do is make the vessel. And for that, you'll need the bulb end of a pipette. You can adjust your wire to make sure that it sits snugly. And with that, it brings us to the end of our tutorial. I hope this gives you ideas for your next project, or you join along in making it with me. If you're new, welcome. Thank you for being here. If you've made it this far in the video, I really do appreciate you. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Next tutorial will be more of the little stuff, but I'm not sure what pieces yet. Thank you, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.